Mr. Buffett, um, you obviously have filters that you apply on selecting people as you do on stocks. Can you tell us a little bit about what those filters are? Filters on people? Yes, in selecting, you have an ability to motivate people who have a lot of money to keep working. What do you look for to figure out who those people are? That is a key, key question, because when we buy businesses, we don't have managers to put in them. I mean, we, we're not buying them that way. We don't have a lot of MBAs around the office uh, that we're... Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> that I, you know, I have not promised that they're going to have all kinds of opportunities. So, as a practical matter, we need management with the businesses that we buy. and. Three times out of four, or thereabouts, the manager is the owner and is receiving tens of millions, maybe hundreds of millions of dollars. So they're not, they don't have to work. And we have to decide in that time when we meet them whether they love the business or love money. And we're not making a moral judgment. Charlie may, but I... I'm not making a moral judgment about whether it's better to love the business or love money, but it's very important for me to know which, which of the two is the primary motivator with them. And uh, we have had extremely good luck in identifying people who love their business. And so all, all we have to do is avoid anything that, that uh, on our part, that diminishes that love of the business or makes other conditions so intolerable that they overcome that love of the business. And we have all we have a number of people working for us that have no financial need to work at all. And they probably outwork, you know, ninety five percent or more of the people in the world. And they do it because they, they just they love smacking the ball. And uh, we almost we, we virtually had no mistakes in that respect. Uh, and we have identified a number of people, Charlie and I have, in terms of proposals to us, where we felt that they did really, they liked the money better than the business. They were kind of tired of the business, you know, and, and they might promise us that they would continue on and they would do it in good faith, but something would happen six months later, a year later, and they'd, they'd say to themselves, why am I doing this, you know, for Berkshire Hathaway when I, got, when I could be doing whatever else they want to do? I can't tell you exactly how we what filter it is that we that we put them through uh, mentally, but I, I can tell you that that if you've been around a while, you can I think you can have a pretty high batting average in in, in, in coming to those conclusions, as you can about other aspects of human behavior. I'm not saying you can take a hundred people and take a look at them and analyze their personalities or anything of the sort, but I think when you see the extreme cases the ones that are going to cause you nothing but trouble or the ones that are going to bring you nothing but, but uh, joy, I think you can identify those pretty well. Charlie? Well, yeah, I think it's pretty simple. You've got integrity, uh, intelligence, and experience, and dedication. And that's what human enterprises need to run well. And, and we've been very lucky in, in getting this marvelous group of uh, associates to work with all these years. It would be hard to do better, I think, than we've than we've done in that respect. Look around this place. I mean, uh, and particularly you young people, look around this place. Uh, look at how much gratification can come into these lives, which have been mostly spent in deferring gratification. It's a uh, it's a very funny group of people, you shareholders.